morning. Good morning. God bless you all. We're starting this much earlier because we have a doctor's appointment today. Yes. And um, <coughs> I just want to welcome you all. You're gleaming with the grays. Yep. My name is Crystal. And I'm Kevin. This is for those who may not know us. We noticed we haven't been introducing ourselves. So <laughs> <laughs> we're trying to make sure to do that. Um, and like we said, we kind of named our devotions uh, Gleaming with the Grays. So if you want to know what that means, go ahead. You can look up those definitions and it will give you insight as to why the Holy Spirit put that name on our hearts for this. Um, as always, we're not going to wait too awful long for people to join us, but we will share a little bit about our weekend. Um, we were pretty busy, really, and you finished the chicken coop? Yes, yes, I finished the chicken coop, and uh, oh man, it's so nice. They're, it is. The chickens now uh, they have know so it's home. They have so much more room. Yes, they know it's home, and they yeah, got a too. lot of build a lot of roosting areas for them with just wood and center blocks, concrete center blocks. So it's really nice. Yep. They like jumping on top of buckets and all different kinds of things so that they can just enjoy their time when they're in lockup, as we call it. <laughs> um, we used to let our chickens free range constantly, but we lost pretty much our entire flock over the span of a year. So we, this time around, we got a rooster which is a testimony for another time. Yes. Um, and when they're big enough, we may, we may let them free range since we have a rooster this go around. We also got to share a word at our church, which was amazing to yes. have that opportunity. We were so, so humbled and grateful for it. Yes, it was what an honor. Yes. To, you know, you don't get too many pastors that wanna, uh, that's willing to share their pulpit to help uh, equip equipped and uh, teach and mentor uh, upcoming ministers, you know, uh, stepping out in their calling. That, that What a wonderful thing that Revival Center Community Church does. Yes, it was amazing. It's very amazing. Very humbling. Yes, very humbling. <laughs> I, I know what now I got the, I, we get the, fit, well. You get the nervousness we, that they must feel, you know. Yes, but then we also get to feel the glory of the Lord. Yes. All fresh on us. And I know the feeling now of when you get up there and you just let the Holy Spirit has his way and it's not your words. Yeah. And what's amazing, I think we talked, uh, in, you know, afterwards, we were like, do you remember what you said? We're like, no, I don't. What, what did I say? Did I say that? I hope it was good. <laughs> <laughs> and it's because it's like we don't really, we prepare, but we don't prepare. We just. We prepare, just, but we don't. Um, Oh, it's kind we of, just kind of submit ourselves to him yes. and his ways. So, um, <laughs> we'll just open up in prayer. Like always, if you ever have prayer requests and you're sitting here live with us, don't be afraid to put them in the comments. Our 14 year old son is like our production manager, so to speak. He's behind the scenes. Shout out to Fabian. Thank you for everything you do. Yes. Um, so he, he manages the comments while we're live and he responds to you. So if you need anything, if you have any comments, join us, join in. We um, appreciate it and it, it, it so encourages us. You yes. know, we're not ones to look at how many viewers and what our statistics are. So we don't know you're really here unless you let us know you're here. So um, don't be afraid to comment hello or good morning. And we just thank you guys for joining us daily because it's it so encourages us and helps us to know that we're doing it for more than just the Lord, that there are people who appreciate it. So we thank you all. And we'll just open in prayer. I'm going to open, I think, right? Okay. Since I'm reading. Sure. How about you open and I read? Okay. Okay. We want to thank you, Lord, for giving the breath in our lungs yes. and the strength to wake up. Thank you for the protection over us as we slept, and Lord, uh, waking us up. For we know that your grace and mercies are new every morning. And we ask, Lord, that your words be received 
and once we see that they land on fertile soil. And when landing on this fertile soil, Lord, we ask that it takes strong roots, a firm foundation within us, so that we may fulfill the calling that you have on our lives, Jesus. In your holy name we pray, give thanks, and ask these things. Amen. Amen. So if you all want to turn, today our reading is going to be in Romans chapter 11. Romans chapter 11, verse 29. It's a very short verse. It's so powerful. Romans chapter 11, 29. If you're there, let me get an amen. Amen. All right. You put on my eyeballs. Yep. Need your spectacles. Yeah. Okay, so it says, and I'm reading the New Living Translation. It says, for God's gifts and his call can never be withdrawn. So this is something that we've kind of been meditating on the past week or so because I have always thought like Samson um, or Saul that if I... Uh, you know, can't get right. God's just going to take his anointing off of me. He's going to take my gifts from me. And I'm going to be, you know, left without a calling and left without my gifts. And um, it scared me, you know, uh, believing this. But I'm coming to learn that that's not the case with the Lord. Um because of what Jesus did on the cross, our gifts and our call can never be withdrawn because they were given to us as gifts. They're not based on our performance. Um, God has predestined us to live a specific call and purpose. And he's given us specific gifts in order to um, make sure that we can answer our call and fulfill our call and ultimately fulfill our destiny over, over the destiny he's given us over our lives. Yes, yes. Um, now, some of you may look and say, well, I don't know what my calling is. Actually, you do. God has given you your calling, well, correction, your gifts. You don't know what your gifts are. God has given you your gifts way before you were even birthed into this world. Your calling that God has placed on your life was given to you before you was even born into this world. So just say your calling is here. It has never changed. And he's giving you your gifts. And here's a funny thing. Well, here's an amazing thing. You have operated in your gifts before. More than and, likely. And and more than likely throughout childhood. Yes. Um, now, John 10.10, 10, which is a memory verse for Higher Ground School of Ministry. Praise the Lord, we finally got it. <laughs> <laughs> it says, a thief comes only to steal and to kill and to destroy. But I have come so that I may give so that they may have life yes. and life in you, abundance. You say it a different version because oh, we yeah, read two right. different Bibles. So Yeah, that's true. So that they may have life and have it in abundance. Your life is Jesus. Jesus your calling and your gifts is life. The life is worship. You know, when worshiping is bringing life, it's bringing love, it's bringing fruit of the spirit. And therefore, your gift that he gives you, the, whatever the Lord discloses to you or let known, the enemy knows also. So the enemy, which is a thief, tries to snatch up that seed, try to suppress or take your gift. Or maybe he just makes you think that what your gift is is not important or that you're not good enough at your gift so you shouldn't keep trying. Or maybe he tries to distract you with busyness so that you're too busy to exercise your gift. Yes, whether it be like that that uh, that uh that woman who as a child loved to dance and her passion was dancing and throughout and as she got older, she may have gotten cross paths with someone else. Said, "Oh no, you can't do this," you know, or you're not that great. Why don't you great. just give up? Or doors were in a naturally shut for her to get into this dance school or that dance school. That doesn't mean that 
that's not your gift. Because when God gives you a gift, it's, it's for his glory. You, you, your calling may be to dance for him. You know, dance for him in worship. You know, in, in worship and in song. And it's funny you bring this up because I remember as a little girl, like I would uh, put music on and me and my stepsister would make up dances, like choreographed dances to these songs, you know, New Kids on the Block and whatnot. And it wasn't until I started going to this new church that has praise dance that the Lord reminded me that it was something that I used to love to do, that I had a passion for. And it had been so long since I danced. I think I was maybe like 10 or 11 the last time I danced previously. We renewed a new pas uh, passion within you it, it, that was suppressed. Right, and so I had not danced in so long. I totally forgot that I even enjoyed dancing. It wasn't until this year that I realized, wait a minute, I think this is something I'm supposed to be doing for the Lord. And similarly, you have a testimony about... Yes. Um, well, I used to play the saxophone, and I started back in the sixth grade. And just to love day, uh, I'm 46 years old, so you can <laughs> guess how long ago that was. And I played the alto saxophone. And I really... Not too long ago. And I really, really enjoyed music. I I would... I had the ability to be able to play by ear. So if I would hear a song, say like uh, back in the days, the Sanford and Son, Sanford and Son, or anything I would hear on TV, I can hear it and I can play it on, on my saxophone within like two minutes. Um, gotten a lot of accolades, you know, when I was in school. But either way, as I gotten older, I my passion for it just died out. I sought to go to uh, the military instead of pursuing music and as I did that that passion slowly just went away just went away I was looking at my, I, a false calling for as I guess you can say as being serving in the military not saying that it's bad but anyway um, so then now with my walk of going to church um, up until recently going to church, when they were singing and worship, I was like, oh, okay, you know, I would have received the word. Maybe I can skip uh, the worship portion. You know, I'm not really into the music. And I don't know how that came about. And um, thank, thanks to our pastors that pushed, pushed you know, uh, had us step out into, I guess, what you want to say? Step out of our comfort zone. Yeah, step out of our comfort zone and ask us to be uh, the youth, youth band ministers, youth leaders, youth leaders, youth band leaders, yeah. Yes, and of course, I was like, ah, uh, you know. He's like, I don't know. It's been so long. I'm like, you got a saxophone. You can read music. You can hear music. You got this. And I, I guess you can say I, um, <clears throat> not really telling the truth. I guess you can say, according to scripture, said that I believe that God have, uh, because I haven't used it, God has taken my uh, gifting away, yeah. you know, because I haven't used it for him. And now the scales are off my eyes. I see now that my, the gift that he embedded in me goes in line, lines up with my calling. So I am to call to worship him. Well, you song. thought your gift was taken away. Mm -hmm. He didn't think he could play his saxophone anymore. And after a, a huge amount of encouragement from his wife and mentors, yes, he finally went out into the shed and got his saxophone out of storage. And he picked it up and he was playing it like he'd never missed a beat. Like yes. he'd never missed a beat. Now, the saxophone is in disrepair. We, we um, you know, it had been left you know, for 20 years, never been touched. So it needs new pads. It, it has, uh, I don't, they're not buttons. What do you call them? Keys. Keys but that are, that was stick. But God is so faithful. We have complete and utter faith that when he's ready, we will be able 
to purchase a new one because it, it doesn't make sense to fix the old one. It's going to cost more to fix it than it would be to buy a new one. So yes, and it's been what, we just trust him. Yes, but we know now your giftings. He doesn't take them away. You can either run from them, and they they you know uh, almost dissolve or something. You know, like what am I trying to say? You can run, and the passion wanes, like he says. You know, mm -hmm. you you can run from it, uh, but, but it, it doesn't, doesn't change mean it doesn't. that that. They're gone, because like yes. him, you can pick it back up. And I have another example too, because huh? I was sing, I would sing for the Lord my whole life. I I enjoyed singing. Now, um, I had certain opportunities to worship the Lord with my voice previously, and I just felt like I wasn't good enough, and so I I just stopped trying out for certain things and I really kind of gave up on um, you know worshiping with my voice and it was just yesterday that actually in church where um, the minister leading the sermon asked that if God had placed a song on our hearts to come and sing and so a couple people come and, and they came and they shared their songs. It was so beautiful. Yes, yes it was. And I was listening and I kept hearing, you know, a song in my heart. And I second guessed, like, should I really go up there and sing this? And then um, the minister, Joanne, called, called me out and was like, Crystal, you have a song. <laughs> How did she know? How did she know? She knew. Uh, we spent Wednesday Bible spirit uh, Bible studies together, and yes, because I think we get have gotten to know each other on such an intimate level, we can kind of mm. tell. And plus, the Holy Spirit's like, get her up there. That's what I. There. That's what I believe. The Holy Spirit. Um, so. <laughs> okay. So, um, you know, I went up there and I sang. I was so nervous, but I also felt the Holy Spirit like fall afresh on me in a way that I've never felt before. And then I received a word that my songs would help bring healing and deliverance to people. So I, God reassured me that that call, that gift was not taken from me. It was still there. I had neglected the gift, but he had never neglected the gift and never, you know, rescinded the gift. He never revoked the gift. Um, it's always been in me, just like his gifts have always been in him, and your gifts have always been in you. Um, God's not going to take them away. And some of you may have gifts that you don't even know exist. Previously, I would never, ever have called myself an artist. I would have told you, and I did tell people, I couldn't even draw a stick figure. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> so... It wasn't until the Lord really pushed me out of my comfort zone and the Holy Spirit told me, I want you to paint for me, that I realized that I have a gift of painting. So we have gifts we haven't even tapped into because of, you know, whatever reason. Maybe you doubt or maybe you're self-conscious, but God has placed gifts in you, not just for his glory, but for you to use those gifts and help other people find out who he is and how wonderful he is yes. for his glory. Yes. So uh, in that, we want to want you to just dig deep. Go back into when you was a youth. And what did you like to do? What did you like to do and did it so well that you like, say, like dance or drawing or music that you do not do now? Or perhaps you do, you do it now, but very little of it. That just may be, just may be your your gift that the Lord given you, and that you can bring forth His glory, and uh, and it's, it lines up with the calling He has on your life. And speaking of calling, Pastor Jim always says that your calling is the point where your passion intersects with your giftings. Mm 
So if you are someone who doesn't know what calling God has placed on your life, then I would just challenge you to take some time today and sit down and write, you know, recall some memories from your childhood and write some things down that you used to love to do. Mm-hmm. And then, you know, go into God, go to God and worship and, and see if those gifts are still, you know, there within you. I, I promise you. They are. Now, you may be a little rusty. You was a little rusty. Yes. I'm a little rusty. Now, also, But that doesn't mean they're gone. Yes. And um, go in also with a repentive heart. Yes. You know, um, just tell the Lord that, you know, you realize that he's, you're thankful for the gifts that he has given you and that you are repentant of not uh, using the gift that he's given you, you know, as a pushing it to the side. And um, I just want to remind you, again, in our reading, that it says, God's gracious gifts and callings are irrevocable. The enemy may come and try to steal it. He may try to suppress it by getting you to not realize your identity, that you are a dancer, that you are a musician, you know, that you are an artist. Or he may throw busy things or things to distract you. But it says in the Word, that your gifts and callings are irrevocable. Amen. Amen. With that, if you have any prayer requests, do we have any prayer requests? Amen. All right. With that, we're going to go ahead and close in prayer. Amen. Father God, we thank you for this time in your word. We thank you, Holy Spirit, that you give us the words to speak to encourage others. And we thank you, Jesus, that you gave your life on the cross so that we could live in your grace and mercy and that we've received the gracious gift of salvation. We thank you, Father, for this teaching. We thank you, Lord, for open hearts that are receiving it, not just now, but later when it's watched. I thank you, Father, that you will pour out a special blessing on every person that watches this. Remind them of who they are in you, Lord. Help them to recall the gifts that you've placed with them. And Lord, I pray that that gifts that they don't even know of would be activated by the Holy Spirit in your precious name, Jesus. I thank you, Lord, for looking after my son as he sees his cast today. I thank you that there will be no surgery needed on his arm. I thank you, Lord, that there will be peaceful travels on I-4 if we have to take it. And I thank you, Lord, that all that you have planned has already been taken care of, that you are ahead of us and you've cleared our path. I thank you, Lord, for the opportunity to be able to do these devotions every day. Thank you for never giving up on me. Thank you for never giving up on my marriage. We give you all the praise and all the honor and all the glory in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen.